he was my first sexual relationship, as he was a number of my fraternity brothers. He asked me if I'd come back to his apartment <laughs> at 3 o'clock in the morning. I said, what was that all about, you and the congressman? And he said, said we're having a relationship. He grabbed me by the shoulder and very boldly said, remember, you never saw me. You've never been here. He had a relationship with him, a sexual relationship with him. We never discussed his political platform or what he believed in. We just had sex. Let me be clear. I am not gay. The idea of gay Republicans never made much sense to me. After all, why would a gay person want to associate with a party that compares homosexuality to pedophilia, incest, and bestiality, calls their existence a greater threat to America than terrorism, and has pinned its political future on demonizing you and taking away your rights? But if you were in the closet and wanted desperately to keep your sexuality secret, acting like a gay-hating conservative might seem like a pretty good disguise. That's the focus of Kirby Dick's powerful documentary, Outrage, which outs several closeted Republican politicians to show how their hypocrisy and virulently anti-gay voting records leads to gay people losing their rights, and sometimes their lives. In many ways, Outrage acts as a gay history of recent American politics, showing that gays have often held prominent roles in the GOP and Republican administrations. The movie also serves as an alternate profile of Washington, D.C., which one interviewee describes as being a gayer city than San Francisco. Not only are there gay politicians, but also tons of gay staff members, aides, strategists, and lobbyists, who are considered good hires since they can more easily accommodate the long hours demanded by D.C. life, since they usually don't have kids or spouses. Many members of the press covering D.C. are also gay. Despite this and the fact that it's apparently common knowledge inside the Beltway who's gay and who isn't, D.C. remains a very closeted town, where everyone understands that coming out publicly, especially if you're a Republican, could cost you your career. The media is complicit in this cover-up, declining to report on a politician's sexuality even though a gay person who consistently votes against gay interests is a pretty newsworthy story. Just like a politician who moralizes about the sanctity of marriage while having an affair. Mark Sanford. Through the experiences of DC insiders and openly gay politicians like Barney Frank, Tammy Baldwin, and former Arizona representative Jim Colby, outrage also provides something of a personality profile of a closeted politician. The person who speaks about this most poignantly is Jim McGreevy, the former governor of New Jersey who came out and resigned in 2004 when allegations arose that he was cheating on his wife with a male staffer. Like so many people of his generation, McGreevy was taught that being gay was a horrible, shameful sin akin to mental illness, making the closet the only feasible option, especially if you wanted to pursue a political career. But as many of the film's interviewees attest, being in the closet can warp your brain and make you do crazy things. Like when Idaho Senator Larry Widestance Craig risked his entire political career for anonymous gay sex in an airport bathroom. Along with Craig, Outrage takes a good look at Charlie Crist, the Florida governor who was on the short list to be John McCain's vice presidential pick. Crist had been married once for six months in 1979 to a woman who later turned out to be a lesbian. After that, he claims he didn't date for the next 20 years, at least not women. But when a close political race was at hand, Crist would suddenly and conspicuously start dating attractive women to quell rumors about his homosexuality, later getting engaged to a woman right about the same time his name was being mentioned for the VP slot. A few people in the movie say it's never right to out anyone, but Outrage doesn't just do this for kicks. All of the closeted Republicans in the film have horrible voting records when it comes to gay issues. Larry Craig voted against increasing funding for HIV AIDS projects 10 times. Ed Schrock, a Virginia Republican who was recorded trying to pick up men using a phone service, had a 0% lifetime gay rights voting record. Ken Melman, who was outed on CNN by Bill Maher, was the chairman of the Republican National Committee, which ran a viciously anti-gay campaign for Bush and Cheney in 2004. And Florida under Charlie Crist is the only state with an outright ban on adoption by gay couples. By using their votes to hide their homosexuality, not only are these closeted Republicans hypocrites and traitors, but they're putting the lives of gay people at risk, whether through AIDS or anti-gay violence whipped up by their homophobic rhetoric. So I say out these assholes. All of them. Don't let them distort the debate for gay rights because they hate themselves and would rather put their political ambitions ahead of their honesty and humanity. Besides, if a politician can't even be honest with himself, what makes you think he'll be honest with you? I'm Jonathan Kim, and this is a Rethink Review.